Hey, what is going on, you guys? Welcome to One of Each, the Dumb and Hungry podcast, where we talk about our food adventures and our favorite food groups. I'm Angelo, the Dumb and Hungry, and thank you for joining us. Hope you're doing all right. Hey, everyone. Looks like I am flying solo today. If you're not, it's not any indication of change of uh, the direction or uh, plan for, you know, what's to come. Although I'm sure some people, I shall, would be glad to um to hear of otherwise but anyway um i'm here today and i could have easily asked him or anyone else to join but i it's one of those days i have failed at uh coordinating so uh we're here and i wanted to catch up and see how you guys are doing hope you're doing okay hope uh your week's been all right i don't know if you guys work you know uh from home or at some location or or something in between but Hope your week's been good. Hope you've been able to be productive and uh, get things done. And then, you know, when you're done uh, with your, you know, nine to five or whatever, hopefully you are able to do what you want uh, in your own time. Um, I've certainly been up to quite a bit um, and hopefully there's more to catch up on uh, in the future. But just let me give some highlights. Uh <laughs> Because there are quite a few and probably too many to, to mention this time and we want to save some for, for later too. Don't want to give away too much. Um, but um, as far as what's been going on, um, one, one thing I really would like to talk about in depth uh, would be a recent trip to New York. And um, from bagels to pizza, subways, rats, you name it. They, <laughs> New York's got it. It's got a really great energy, great vibe. Um, and to be honest, I think I, you know, I think I came at a great time, um, some great food, some great weather, you know, save for some, some things, hopefully that you know, I'll share later, but, um, it was, it was a lot of fun. So, um, we'll, hopefully we'll talk about that. Um, and more recently, uh, had a chance to visit Oakland, um, uh, Actually, I just tagged along with uh, John and, and Carmen, um, and we had some uh, fun times uh, whining and dining, and uh, surprisingly, a lot of pizza uh, consumed, uh, but there's good reason for that, and hopefully we'll share more about that too, uh, but that was a great trip, and uh, I want to thank um, you know John and Carmen for, for letting me come along, and also to John's sister and her boyfriend for... Um, just kind of being really nice to uh, let us hang out and play some uh, really nice uh, or fun board games and um, really challenge my brain uh, to try to pay attention to basic rules and um, instructions. So it's always a challenge, but, um, you know, get through it. And it, like I said, it's a good time. Um, but as far as other places uh, in this neck of the woods um, on the west coast here uh in la we visited a number of places with the royal we um few that come to mind heritage barbecue man there was a day so i just spent a day i remember i in the morning i visited heritage sometime during the week and man it is as good as ever i don't have any pictures lined up here and maybe i'll um do something um eventually i don't know but but there was a good tray just the uh, the basics brisket you know ribs and sausage and all of them were you know they hit i mean just as i'm just as happy um you know digging into that tray as um as ever so uh, really happy about that down there in san juan capistrano and uh there were some sides in there uh there was a nice brussels sprout um, you know, it's really nice. Brussels sprouts can get a bad rap, but when you cook them right and get them nice and charred, brings out a nice flavor beyond a, uh, beyond the bitterness, uh, that I think that it kind of gets too bad a reputation for, but, um, it was prepared really nicely, uh, nice and charred. And there's also, and also finish it off with a nice dessert, you know, a, ba a banana pudding. Um, but the whole tray was just lovely and, and surprisingly it, it, was enough <laughs> for for a, a solo diner like me. Um, so thanks to uh, the guys over there at Heritage and Danny and uh, nice to see Brenda too. So, um, but yeah, uh, 
if you're ever down there, give them uh, give them a visit. Um, I think you know around the same time, you know, I I had a chance. I don't usually go to a lot of high end or fancy restaurants per se. Um, I or yeah, I I don't know. I, I usually I'll go with uh, maybe with someone who's already planning to go or as a group or. Um, but one place I, I did manage to visit was uh, Mott 2 out in, um, in Beverly Hills. And it is a great, um, place for, uh, just a great steak. Although I, I don't think they refer to themselves as a steakhouse, but, uh, the steaks that they are serving are quite excellent. Um, I think one of the interesting uh, appeals there was the way they prepare uh, prepare the the meat. So they use like I think it's wagyu beef from New Zealand, and the way they prepare is called a warm red, and um, that just in in um, involves cooking it to uh, it it has the appearance I'm sorry of a like a really rare meat so it's red but the temperature is more like a, is more to a medium rare. So you have this, yeah, definitely this kind of juxtaposition of this visual versus, um, you know, the cooking temp, but the flavor is, uh, just really excellent quality. Um, you know, great flavor, great beef flavor. Um, I, I can't remember what did I have? It, it was definitely a rich cut. You, you had a nice piece of, you know, of the meat and probably it was a ribeye cause there was a cap um, which was great. No cap, if you will. Uh, but it was a good, um, I don't know. It was, uh, just a great experience. I mean, again, as even as a solo diner, um, I can see people, groups come in, uh, in and out, but, um, they took good care of, uh, even a guy like me. So, um, now not to say, of course it's, it comes at a price, but, uh, that price might be well worth the visit, uh, with both the food and just the overall vibe and experience. Again, I, I go back to thinking like, man, these nice restaurants are really nice, but they're always so dark. It's like, what are you trying to hide? Okay. What are you people trying to hide? Or maybe it's just the people that are dining. Maybe they're trying to hide something or they don't want to, uh, you know, oh, yeah, fix it. I'm like, okay. Um, but maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe it's uh, uh, some literal manifestation of just trying to um, run away from your problems or or shield whatever is going on. I don't know. Probably is way off the point, and I have just gone off track here. Um, but it is a great um, meal. So please, uh, that's Matu. Check it out if you can. I think some of the other, I'm trying to remember, I'm, I'm looking at the phone as we speak. And, um, what else did I have? There's like this bone broth, really rich flavor of, of, um, of beef, but it's like $9 for like, what seems to be like a shot glass. I'm like, okay, do you need that? Yeah, you do. <laughs> no, it's nice. It's a nice starter. And then there's also a, um, a beef tartare and there are a couple different styles. I think I don't remember what the differences are and I don't quite remember offhand. Um, and I don't often have beef tartare. Um, but it was, um, it was quite delicious you know beef tartare is a raw meat preparation and they had like these little bread chips or something they used to scoop the meat and there's like this egg yolk in there uh yeah very raw uh situation but um you know uh the few times including this beef tartare was a great experience so i'm glad i had it and um there was some uh roasted cauliflower some cream spinach um and then just top it all off with uh, this flourless chocolate cake, which uh, I think really, really brought it all together nicely. Um, so, hey, it's uh, healthy, right? I mean, it's uh, flourless. So, uh, you know, it's like that keto carb, uh, carb free. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm talking about. Oh, man. Um, some other places uh, back to more of the pace that I'm used to. Uh, Amboy, I remember visiting there and having uh, the uh, the the thick cut burger, the the DH, I believe, is they refer to it. So they have a kind of a different, not a different, but like uh, an updated uh, way of their menu. And by and this is not recent. I mean, this is something they've rolled out for a while. It's just that I'm mentioning it now. You know, they have kind of three different uh, styles of um, of burger. As far as the uh, the preparation of the meat, you kind of have like um, you know your smash burger, 
Um, you have maybe a thicker cut, uh, kind of like a, just like a regular kind of patty you think of in a, in a typical like roadside burger or something. And then you have the DH, which is like the thick cut. Um, and then they have different, like kind of three different preparations as well. Um, like something fancy, something, you know, kind of standard. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I could have lined it up easily. I could have looked it up, but, um, I'm here just kind of rambling on. Um, but it was a, uh, a great meal. Um, a great bite as always out in, uh, in Chinatown on the far East Plaza. So, um, I don't know. It's like, there are a lot of great burgers out in LA and, um, uh, I never have enough time to have all of them at the same time. Uh, I wish I could. Um, but Amboy is certainly, uh, up there as, um, one of those places to check out. Uh, additionally, uh, as far as nice handheld portable foods, if you will, um, they're tacos, you know, and, uh, one taco place I, uh, remember visiting is Taco Arabes de Puebla. And, uh, that is, you know, a great bite. Um, I think they used to be open only like at night, but now they have, um, like kind of more expanded hours. So, uh, so I think that really, uh, really helps, um, your access to your fix of uh, Taco Arabes. So it's like, what is Taco Arabes? Well, maybe I don't exactly know, but I just know it's delicious. So Taco Arabes is, uh, it's more got that, oh, okay, I'm going to misspeak here maybe, We've got more of that Lebanese influence um, in Mexican cuisine. Um, so it's, you know, the meat is prepared like a shawarma, it's almost like a shawarma taco, I, I want to say. Um, because you have the meat prepared off a spit, um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of slight, like you would have with, um, al pastor, you know, um, but you know, it's, it's, a it's a different meat, different, you know, preparation, you know, on, in its flavor and style. And, uh, you can have it topped with some cheese and some, uh, uh, some avocado. I think that's like kind of the specialty there. So make sure you, uh, check that out. Um, and in, I think in addition, yeah, in addition to that, the taco arabes, uh, I also had a, a torta with a, with like this crispy milanesa. Uh, it's like nice and crunchy and breaded. <laughs> so it's just this big sandwich uh, on top of the, uh, the taco arabes, which already in itself is a sizable taco. I mean, like it's easily what, maybe five, six inch tortilla or something um, stuffed with the carnes and everything, it's, uh, it's something else. So it's sizable. Um, and then a torta on top of that. I mean, I was a satisfied, um, person for probably about 20 minutes, but, uh, satisfied nevertheless. So, um, tacos arabes uh, de Puebla. Um, and then speaking, I guess maybe in the vein of tacos, but of a more, um, more fresh, take, I guess, a whole Bosch. Man, I um, I remember, want to thank Jamie, I remember her taking uh, us out there a while back uh, for the first time, and um, I just was really impressed and uh, really satisfied with such fresh seafood and uh, from, you know, fish to the, the octopus, the pulpo, uh, ceviche and everything like that. And so I kind of had a similar menu. It really had like all the hits. Um, when I visited there, it's in a small market, like kind of a food market. Um, and, uh, it's just as great. I mean, I, I know they've gotten, you know, the recognition late, uh, as of late, you know, like best restaurant of the year, they definitely have their Michelin recognitions, um, which is all, you know, well-deserved. Um, but yeah, I just, I really wanted to, to visit and yeah, sure. There was a line, um, but that line gets turned over pretty quickly, but that market, I got to tell you, it is, um, it's busy, you know, it's a, it's a relatively small space. It's a sizable space, but it's still relatively small. I think for the amount of people that are coming through and it's not just for them, there are several other businesses as well. I think, you know, the one that comes to mind is, uh, uh Chicken Itza. and, um, but beyond, yeah, I mean, there's just uh, so much going on over there. But um, certainly now with the recognition of uh, for Holbosch, 
people are are definitely um, uh, flocking in and getting their fix of great fresh seafood. I mean, I really uh, would be interested to try their um, the tasting menu when that comes. It's just I think it's just really popular, so people are signing up really fast when when things come up. So uh, yeah, it, it might be a challenge to find a spot unless you really keep an eye on you know on when those reservations open up. So yeah, I mean, really a great uh, meal overall. So it can't really, um, really can't go wrong there. But let me see if I remember offhand, we have a smoked, okay, I just brought it up, thankfully, smoked kanpachi taco, the Baja fish taco, the pulpo asada, the ceviche mixto. So a lot of those things uh, definitely had those. Uh, I think I also had an order of uh, uh, churros. So it's like, yeah, just fried, you know, the churros and then topped with like a um, a chocolate sauce. Beautiful. <laughs> nice way to, to round out the uh, the seafood. So uh, Holbosch down there in, uh, in downtown near USC. So, um, oof, very good. Um, moving on, <laughs> also with uh, more, more to eat. Um, Relatively recently, I met up with uh, my buddy Jose, and I want to thank him for you know always hitting me up and you know wanting to get some good eats and you know go and try out new things. So um, a place that he had heard about and I think I had been on my radar radar, but definitely came to light because of him. Uh, we visited out in uh, you know in kind of Boyle Heights along the Olympic stretch, you know for the Olympic Boulevard. Uh, it's a boulevard, I don't know, but uh, for tacos. Um, Particularly, we we visited Carnitas Los Chingones, and that's on uh, on Olympic and Dakota, right across from um, Marisco Salisco. So um, there's definitely going to be a small kind of tour um, that we had to do. So um, Carnitas Los Chingones, uh, we we hit up first, and definitely they they definitely got uh, the line, they got the crowds. Um, but they got a pretty relatively fast uh, turnaround for, you know, getting through the line. Although I think from start to finish, it probably took nearly an hour, you know. So, you know, I'm going to say that um, for, you know, the popular spots and for the lines and stuff, that's fine. That's probably what you want. You have people that take your order quickly, relatively quickly. Um, you know, you got to pace with the line and then you have the uh, the waiting time. So you got to you got to plan that out. Sometimes if you take the order too quickly and you make them wait too long, it it's uh it can cause some angst. Um but if you have them kind of wait for a certain time in line and then take the order and then you have your pace and you know turning out the orders, yeah, I mean you create a, a good balance I think of uh what you can um what you serve out. Anyway, so they um they're known for their carnitas but they they Really, I think put themselves uh, on the map with this like um, uh, burrito, a chilaquiles burrito. So, the wonderful dish of uh, nice chilaquiles, but in the uh, form factor of uh, a well-known vehicle of uh, of the burrito. But actually, we didn't go there for that. We just had a chilaquiles plate. So it's just a, a plate, you know, just a container uh, with the chilaquiles with a fried egg on there. And uh, and uh, a serving of carnitas topped on there as well. And I got to say, that was a wonderful bite. I mean, that was such a, such a flavorful. I mean, carnitas um, definitely has their place here, of course. And there are a number of notable places in L.A. that you can get a great bite of carnitas. Um, and this is certainly up there. Uh, I, I certainly, you know, you have your go-tos and I have mine. Um, but this is definitely a great bite. I think what's appealing is that you have the the uh, the preparation, the style uh, in the dish uh, that you come that you have, like chilaquiles or the burrito. Um, so that was um, that was quite good. I mean, the chilaquiles um, were nice, uh, good salsa, nice you know crunch in the uh, the tortilla chips that gets softened up a little bit as you know as you as you. Um, enjoy your meal. And then the carnitas were, you know, uh, it was kind of a mixed, you know, kind of, uh, of meat, uh, not just all shoulder. It had some, you know, some ears, some, uh, other textural things, you know, that sometimes, you know, uh, I enjoy a nice, you know, shoulder or a nice meaty kind of bite, but 
uh, always try to get like a mixed uh, style of carnitas if you can, because you get something from like uh, different little parts. You get some belly, you get some, uh, maybe some, uh, like I said, some, uh, where am I? Uh, <laughs> some ear, some cheek. Um, so yeah, a lot of different uh, textures there. And this was certainly a great, great flavor. Um, nice uh, carnitas uh, to have. Anyway, so we hopped across the street actually to enjoy it because there's really no seating over there. So we hop across the street to Marisco Salisco. Um, I couldn't not, you know, order a, a shrimp taco, at least one. Um, so I definitely did that. And then we just enjoyed the meal on the, um, there on the ledge. If you know, you know, you know, just that gray ledge. Um, they, as a reminder, they also have seating inside, plenty of seating. Um, but you know, we're enjoying other food there. So we just enjoyed outside. Uh, I get my taco. I learned that Jose hasn't had that. Uh, I don't think he's had the tacos de camarón. So, um, kind of putting you on blast here and, uh, make sure you have that bite. Um, because it's definitely one of LA's most unique bites personally. And I think, uh, with it, it's, it's like super delicious, super fresh, great shrimp, like nice, um, just a nice crunchy, you know, uh, taco shell, yeah, it's just um, really well done all around. Doesn't uh, it hits? I think it's uh, what they say. Uh, but also um, to uh, to Jose uh, or kind of a shout out for him. Uh, he's got this um, uh, this venture, I guess, that he's coming up with called the Bun Project. It's a you know, it's a pop up that he's doing um, uh, in Arcadia. So it's called Bun Project. He's uh, doing some burgers and he's kind of uh, putting together flavors that he likes and uh, things that kind of remind him of a good burger. So, um, you know, uh, we've had our share of uh, sharing good burgers and uh, together. And so uh, I'm sure he'll come up with um, he's come up with something great. So um, by the time this comes out, it might be a little too late to check out his next one. I don't know. Uh, again, who knows who actually listens to this? But uh, if you do happen to listen, then yeah. Uh, and if not for this one, then, you know, there's, I'm hoping there will be others, uh, in the future. So, uh, again, that's the, uh, the bun project. Um, one other, I think one place I, I do want to mention here before I move on is, uh, straight up tacos in Lakewood. Uh, I do want to thank Jamie again for the rec. Uh, this is a friend of hers that they known in the realm of fine dining. And, um, what's, what's really nice. I mean, they're out in Lakewood, so, you know, I, I don't know, depending on who listens to this or where you are or, you know, if you're willing to travel over there. Um, it's not that it's in the middle of nowhere. It, I mean, it's in a, you know, a bustling like a suburban town, but <laughs> a little relaxed, I think. But um, yeah, I some people that uh, I've come across and maybe you've uh, read about, they, they say that this place should be somewhere else. I mean, its location should be somewhere more visible, I think, maybe. Um, but I mean, this has got, this place has got plenty of, uh, t attention and, um, people looking, but, um, they make, uh, they make things like tacos and bowls and, and things like that, but they're tacos. And as far as what they offer in them, in addition to, you know, your typical proteins, you got steak, chicken, pork, they have a number of, um, uh, vegetarian options. Which is surprising to come from a program like this, uh, because we really don't discuss that <laughs> aspect. <laughs> it's, um, if anything, it's always in the context of something that's uh, like a garnish or decoration or something we just uh, don't really know much about anyway. But, <laughs> um, but I got to tell you, some of these flavors are are quite excellent. Um, they've got some vegetarian flavors, uh, that one that just really sticks to mind is the one that they have with uh, chickpea and, and like elote, you know, that street corn, but the chickpea, you know, is really nice because, um, it's something, it's a bite that you kind of don't expect, uh, because it actually gives you a crunchy, um, texture, um, in there. So, uh, in addition to, you know, the flavors of your street corn and everything, uh, yeah, you have the crunch and, and it's flavored nicely too. So, um, and they're pretty hearty, you know, they come about three, I think it's 325 or something for a taco, but it's a pretty sizable taco and pretty generous. Um, and if anything, again, the flavors alone, uh, I think are worth, 
uh, trying. So, yeah, that's um, Straight Up Tacos out in um, the city of Lakewood. Um, again, hopefully we'll save more spots for later. Um, but I do want to follow up and speak of more food. <laughs> Thank you um, to our few and only fans for joining us, you know, again, for, um, another great time together as we talk about our food adventures, uh, some local spots and, and pop-ups and all that in between with good food and, and good people. Um, again, uh, thank you as you're listening to, uh, to me fly solo. And, um, again, hopefully we'll get the gang. Okay. We got production problems here. <laughs> Um, we'll get some, some folks, uh, in here pretty soon. Um, so two main things I kind of wanted to, to talk about one kind of, a probably won't take as much time, but still definitely worth mentioning in its own. Um, as you know, we've mentioned a friend of ours, uh, from time to time, uh, who unfortunately is no longer, you know, with us, but, uh, we remember him often and that's our friend, uh, Patrick or Patty. And, uh, you know, as I, uh, record this, you know, the, we celebrate, uh, another birthday that he just, uh, you know, he just passed. Um, that was on the 25th. Yep. So, you know, Patrick was, uh, someone we've talked about because he's just a good friend. He's, uh, someone that you can always count on being just a really funny kind of down to earth kind of guy. Yeah. It always makes you laugh. He's always got that humor. And even though he's trying to be serious, and those times when he's trying to be serious with you, um, you know, he's injecting some humor in there. It kind of makes you think sometimes, you know, even in the laughter, um, he's trying to give you, you know, a larger message uh, to check yourself, you know, before you wreck yourself. Um, and yeah, we would just, you know, banter and just, uh, you know, uh, riff off each other, yell at each other mostly. Um, I know I annoyed him a lot from, you know, as I do with many, uh, from, I don't know, just, uh, small annoying things, uh, just being slow in deciding, uh, things and, um, uh, being vague and, uh, you know, not specific and, you know, many things. And, uh, but overall we, we had a good, um, good friendship and, uh, you know, um, we spent the day actually, uh, had the chance to meet up with my chow, uh, that week and, uh, that day. And we shared some, um, some cheesesteaks, uh, from booze, Philly cheesesteak. Cause that, uh, cheesesteak was definitely a, an important food for him. It could be certainly a staple food group for Patrick. And so, um, uh, yeah, I wanted to, um, make it a point to kind of do that. We didn't really do anything like super serious. We just met up. We just had shared a meal. We caught up with, you know, with each other. Um, but just to be there and to, um, again, enjoy a meal, um, was kind of more than enough to kind of remind us that, Hey, we've got uh, people that we, um, you know, that we remember people that we care about past and present. Um, and it's important to kind of keep them in mind and, um, do things that you can to, uh, to make that happen. Uh, sometimes it's hard. I mean, like just a small example is like, you know, the commute from, <laughs> from, um, you know, from one part of LA to another could take, uh, you know, could be astronomical, could take, feel like an eternity, but, um, maybe it's worth, you know, uh, a little soul sucking traffic to, um, you know, to spend time with, uh, with people that you say that you, you know, you like, I guess, or tolerate <laughs> or care about at least. Um, and so, you know, that was just one of those, you know, one of those days. So again, remembering, you know, our friends and, and things like that. Halloween, you know, we're recording this, uh, you know, it's a time of Halloween, uh, things are in full force and, um, Halloween is definitely a favorite, you know, uh, time of the year for Patrick. Uh, definitely not for me. I, I have a weak constitution, um, but he would love to go on these haunted houses and things like that. You know, you have the Dark Harbor or the Queen Mary or uh, what was that? Uh, it's the one at uh, Universal and haunted is it Horror Nights or something like that. I Again, I repress all those, reject them. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, every now and then, yeah, convince me to 
and go along and yeah i regret but uh i guess we have a fun time if he, he if he had a fun time then i guess it's fine um anyway we we need a i said this before i need a food tour for um for patrick's i i just places that um some are definitely hits and then some are just like uh question marks but you know just um places that remind yeah uh patrick was ahead of his time uh, in the uh in the palette so um yeah i mean you know uh shout out to uh to patty he's out there um so just remember and yeah it's a it's a good time it's a good time um so as we continue to move on more food again um actually wanted to close out the saga of uh my trip to dallas and um, I feel like uh, I, I talked my Chazir off from the last one. Maybe maybe that's part of the influence. Maybe I don't, don't bore him to death uh, on this one. Um, but there's a lot of uh, good adventures, you know, to uh, to enjoy. Um, but uh, yeah, I wanted to kind of finish off, um, you know, where I went and what I visited. And hopefully you will be able to visit out there too. Uh, Dallas Texas, you know, in general, is just the land of barbecue for me. I mean, there are a lot of great restaurants, I'm sure, out there of different fare and cuisine. But uh, when I'm out in Texas, it is um, it's a barbecue affair. Okay, <laughs> just put it that way. Um, we'll talk about uh, one more spot in the uh, Texas monthly top fifty list, uh, and we'll talk about some other small bites that we had. But uh, to recall from last time. Um, we, we basically focused on, uh, the places, uh, a lot of barbecue places. We had Cadillac barbecue, uh, Zavala's and Goldie's. So a lot of heavy hitters, a lot of great spots, um, worth listening to, or at least we're just checking out, um, if you haven't already. So, um, it's, uh, it's a good, um, good time. It's a good place to visit. Actually, Dallas is on its own, I guess. You know, I think it's a city that certainly has plenty to offer, um, but it's certainly, uh, I'd say, n- not for me in that it's not things that I could have, I couldn't have done in other cities, I guess, or maybe other places that I know already locally or otherwise. Um, but Dallas, uh, I had a fun time, you know, um, I would certainly uh, go back, certainly visit again, but um, I spent, I don't remember how, maybe like four days over there. It probably could have uh, you know, brought that down at least one day, um, and still had just as good a time, but that's okay. Uh, really had a nice relaxed pace. Didn't really have to feel rushed or anything. So, um, yeah, had a good time nevertheless. So the place that, uh, we're going to talk about now is, um, a place called a Hurtado, um, barbecue out in, um, the city of Arlington. And so, uh, this is a place actually I have visited uh, previously. I want to thank uh, Mr. Abe Delgado uh, when we had that trip. Oh man, when was that? I want to say 2019, maybe it was. And um, uh, we we did a we did a food tour actually in the Dallas Fort Worth area, um, and and there was a great. Uh, offering of, of places that we went to. We had some great companions with us. I remember a good time with um, some great people. And uh, I know Abe just, you know, took me along, took me under his wing. Um, and I'm just uh, just really happy about that. We, we were all originally there, I think, because of the uh, the Texas Monthly uh, like Food Festival. Um, but yeah, while, while we were there waiting for that day, yeah, we had spent one day uh, in, in Dallas, Fort Worth. Um, many places visited, including, uh, Hurtado. So, um, they're out in Arlington and they also have a location in Fort Worth and they're also, uh, like at the Ranger stadium, I think they're a baseball, I don't follow sports. So I, I have no idea, but yes, there's some baseball looking things here as I can see. <laughs> um, but, uh, I visited their original location in Arlington and what's, yeah, what's really great is that at the time I had visited, um, I, yeah, that place was not built out yet. I mean, I think they had the building, they had the, they were in this, the location, the, the, the property, you know, the lot that they would, uh, turn this into, but yeah, I, um, uh, that was not, 
nothing was really in place. You know, they were probably still doing their pop-ups and events like that. So they had the smoker out there and, um, we, we had a nice sampling of, of, um, of the, of the meats and proteins and stuff that they were preparing. So it was a great, great time, you know, overall, but now it was great to visit because, um, to see them all built out, see the full restaurant. They still have a great portion of, uh, you know, seating outdoors, uh, where you can still see the smoker and, and other things like that. They've really built it up to something really great. So you have, um, and, and I think they on the same property, like in a building, you know, on the same lot is like a, it's like a bar, you know, area, uh, like its own kind of place. If I remember offhand, um, we'll share what that is, but yeah, they, they have this, you know, uh, they have this whole thing down. I mean, it's, uh, really something, um, really something special, really a great story, you know, to see from, you know, um, from pop-ups to brick and mortar, you know, and, and that journey there and expansion. And, um, yeah, so it's, it's a really, it was a really nice time. Really enjoyed that. Um, so with that said, um, so I've never really had a full, you know, meal, uh, of, uh, of, of, of Hurtado. So this was definitely the foray into it, but, uh, I'll pull up, um, the, uh, the picture here, you know, of the dish that uh, I enjoyed <laughs> the solo diner. It's what what I really appreciate here is um, you know most uh, most restaurants and including this of course you can order you would order a la carte you order by uh, the weight you know half pound or whatever fraction thereof um, and you kind of build your own plate right. Uh, what's great here is that you have like an assortment of different plates of different sizes that have you know different offerings. Um, so the size would just, you know, the plate just depends on the size of, you know, who you're feeding, how hungry you are, uh, what kind of variety that you want. So, you know, I really do appreciate that. And so in this case, this plate is, um, called El Jefe and, um, that includes, let's see here, <laughs> quite a bit. You have, um, you, of course you have your brisket, you know, you have pulled pork, you have spare ribs, you have a chicken quarter in there. Um, some burnt ends, sausage, um, and then the sides in this case, I chose some Mac and some green beans just to put some color in there and to, um, maybe say that <laughs> trying to be considerate of, of my, uh, digestion. I don't know. Um, but in addition to that, uh, in addition to that, so that's a heavy plate, but I also added a Texas Twinkie and a, a birria taco. About five, it comes to about five dollars each. The plate I think is about fifty bucks. So you add that on top of that. So the Texas Twinkie, as uh, I've been reminded, is basically a cream cheese stuffed jalapeno wrapped in bacon. In other words, a delicious bite of heaven, which is quite um, quite nice. I mean, Michael would appreciate this uh, with the cream cheese. Just anything, just gives the block. I think that's fine. Um, so it, it's sizable, you know, I don't know. It's like, um, who knows? What is it? It's, it's sizable. I don't even know what to compare it to a jalapeno, <laughs> whatever jalapeno size thing is. That's what it is. Um, a jalapeno again, uh, but yeah, sizable bite. The birria taco was also really nice. Um, there's a container. I think you can see next to the, uh, the Mac, which is, uh, the consomme. Nope. Is that right? Oh man. I don't remember now. Maybe it's not. It could be, or maybe it's barbecue sauce. No, but they had barbecue sauce on the side. Oh man. I'm so confused now. Look, all I know <laughs> is that, um, whatever I had, I really enjoyed. Okay. So, um, brisket, I mean, as far as all the proteins go, it's a solid offering. It's like, I had really no complaints of, uh, you know, anything being too dry to, you know, nothing rendered out too much. I mean, every bite I think was just, was just right. You know, oops, what are we looking at here? Um, but yeah, uh, like for example, the ribs, they had a nice, you know, good smokiness, good bite, you know, nice. There's a nice chew again, often people love that fall off the bone quality, which, which is great in itself. But I think for a good rib, you need, you need it. You need some chew in there, you know, um, give it some, yeah, some give. Nothing that leaves like strands of meat in your teeth while you're chewing, but 
Um, you need some uh, heft in there to, to make it nice. Um, what am I looking at? The Birria Taco. I don't know. It's like the Birria Taco is actually quite good. You know, nice spiced, uh, you know, flavor of beef and, you know, in that, uh, in a hard shell taco. It's a taco dorado, basically. Um, yeah, I mean, like that was a, that was a good bite too. But, um, so what did I talk about? The ribs, the brisket, you know, nothing, nothing to complain about. Like, um, you know, the fats weren't too fatty. The leans weren't too leany. That doesn't make sense. Um, I, I don't know if there was really a bad bite on this plate. Um, to be honest, everything had great flavor. Even the pulled pork, I mean like pulled pork, you know, it's kind of a standard fare. Um, you could argue that it's kind of filler sometimes, but you know, it, uh, does the job and you know, the shoulder is, is quite good. So, um, no complaints there. The chicken was moist. It's like, it's not, yeah, it's moist. It's, uh, got a little bit of peppery flavor in there. Can't really go wrong with that. And the burnt ends. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't like burnt ends? It's like basically meat candy. And in, and in this case is the same. Um, this is a slice of, uh, the lean, uh, brisket there. So, um, got to enjoy some of that. You have some sausage there. Um, I don't know. Maybe if there was something to nitpick, maybe the sausage. I don't know. Maybe it just wasn't, uh, it just, but not, I don't know why. Maybe I'm just saying that. I, I think actually everything was, was quite good. So, uh, no complaints there. So yeah, that was, um, uh, that was Hurtado. Here's a pic of, uh, the outside, I guess. Um, you have, uh, people actually waiting in line wasn't, wasn't, uh, that bad at all. So, let me see. Do I remember when was Hurtado? I think Hurtado was on the last day. Yeah. So I had to space it, like pace it out, you know, like one major barbecue spot a day or else I would die. The only exception was from Cadillac to Zavala's. That was kind of a back-to-back -back thing, but um, Goldie's was its own day. Hurtado was its own day. So it was good. There's a smoker. Yeah, this outdoor space. Again, this this is where we hung out, you know, uh, with Abe and company. Um, but again, this, you know, whatever is here, the benches, the, this building, that building we're looking at uh, is that bar that uh, I was kind of talking about. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, it's um, it's great to kind of see the space really come alive and, and really hold its own. So again, it's a top 50 uh, spot. And, uh, hopefully they stay there, um, because it really is a great offering. Um, and, um, so if you are there, make sure you go, I'm getting, I'm like baking in the hot sun. You know, this is, uh, Dallas in, you know, I don't know, uh, mid, no, early September, you know, still summertime, still got the heat there. Um, yeah. So I'm like running the AC in the car, like all the time. I think even when I'm not in the car, it's like, just run the AC. Um, so it, it's, uh, it's a good plate. Really, uh, really enjoyed that. And I was able to finish that, you know, solo, uh, probably for most people, it would, uh, easily be shared by, uh, definitely up to three people, <laughs> but there are other plates, like I said, that, um, are more or less, uh, depending on what you need. And of course you have a la carte and, you know, everything in between. So, and again, they've got, uh, so this is Arlington, they have the Fort Worth location. And then, you know, if you're ever catching a game with the Rangers, then um, they're out there at that, that stadium as well. So no lack of, um, of your Hurtado. Flavor. And what's nice is that they are open, I think, pretty much during the week, throughout the whole week, if I'm not mistaken. You know, um, a lot of barbecue places, you know, they're open maybe four days a week, um, some less. <laughs> I was lucky again with Cadillac. I think they would have been closed if it were not being that first Saturday of the month. Um, otherwise I would have missed them. But my point is, um, you know, uh, I appreciate that, uh, Hurtado is open, um, seven days a week. So, um, you can get your fix, uh, throughout the week. So from there, there, was that the last day? I don't remember. I don't remember exactly what day that was, um, now, but. I know the following places we're going to talk about are definitely on the last day. So, uh, and there are other food things, you know, sprinkled throughout too, but yeah, it's fine. That's not why we're not exactly why we're here, but, um, to continue on with food related things, I do remember that this is the last day and, um, 
we took a we take a, a different uh, turn, I guess, um, in a in a different direction to uh, go back to another important food group, um, but is not barbecue. In this case, it's burgers. So this place that uh, I'm going to talk about here is called Boots Burgers, and Boots Burgers is this small, definitely hole in the wall operation. Um, definitely far from, uh, you know, the popularity, I suppose, um, that, uh, you would maybe expect from a lot of the places we talk about, but I heard about this place by watching a random YouTube short, um, from, uh, I think it's the first we feast channel, but featuring Mr. George Motes, which we've, we know very well from previous, uh, you know, adventures. Um, but, uh, he was, uh, he had a video where he was talking about, uh, places, uh, for burgers that are not easily, I forgot how he put it. It's like, you can't easily get them all the time. Like they're, they're around, but they've, um, they're just not around all the time. So it might be hard to get. I think that was the point. And one of these places is this boots burgers. And, um, the story I guess is that, uh, they, although they serve through most of the week, there might be a, a day or so where they're not, their hours are very limited. They open at 11 and then they're only open for a few hours, you know? And I, the, the way the video put it is because, uh, the guy that runs it has like a, a job, a day job. And so he does this gig like in the middle of the day, technically like during a lunch break or something, which is kind of wild. Um, but when they're there, I mean, you know, I, I think, uh, yeah, when they're there, then they're making burgers. And so they were in the city of Rockwall, which, um, I have no idea where that was, but it wasn't too far. It's probably, I think it was about 20 minutes in the east, maybe northeast direction from Dallas, or at least from where I was in Dallas. Um, so I wanted to check it out. So let me see. I want to see if I can bring up, um, the website, if any, oh man, I'm so mixed up right now, but I want to bring up the website uh, just to see what kind of information I was able to get. Cause they don't have Instagram. Um, I think they have Facebook. Um, but I think most of the information that you're going to want to find is going to be in, um, probably this website or I don't know, Yelp. I don't even know if they're on Yelp. I didn't bother checking, but, um, let's take a look together. <laughs> Oh, there is a Yelp page. Okay. But let's take a look at, um, this is the website bootsburgers.com. And so there's a gentleman there. Uh, you can see there's that, that, um, I forgot what that thing is called, but anyway, the sign that we were seeing earlier, this is their burger. You know, it's a great roadside burger, uh, meat, cheese, pickle, onion, you know, lettuce in there. Just a good roadside burger. Um, no, no fries, just chips. Um, and they got a vending machine out there uh, where you get your drinks. So they're just in the corner of like this neighborhood. It's a residential spot. You know, you're not going to get, you know, a lot of eyes here coming through. But um, yeah, let, if I zoom out and see like kind of relative to where it is, there's Dallas, right? And there is Boots Burgers in Rockwall. I said that. I said that right. right? Here's their menu. Let's zoom in a little bit. You can get a hamburger, okay? Starts at five fifty. You get a double meat, six fifty. Cheeseburger, six bucks. Double cheese, single meat, six twenty five. Double meat, single cheese, seven bucks. Or a double double for eight bucks. Of course, that's uh, that's what I got. Uh, you can get your chips. You get your hot. You get this hot relish either on the burger or on the side. Uh, you get an extra patty. So here are the hours, right? You see the hours? Tuesday through Saturday, okay? Eleven through one thirty. You believe that 11 through 1:30, and then that's it. It's like, they're done. You know, <laughs> there's their phone number. You can call in and, uh, you can place an order. Uh, even the, and even so from personal experience, 
Uh, it'll take like 40, 45 minutes to get your order through. Okay. So plan it out. All right. So people are going, I mean, they got a following, no doubt, you know, but um, this is definitely like one of those, if you will, hidden gems. Uh, and just those uh, small, you know, stops for adventure. Um, very interesting. Cash only. All right. So uh, they also have the, you know, possibility of running out. Uh, so selling out. So just make sure you uh, plan that accordingly. Um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, let me see. Now I got to bring up where I what I got. So I got a double double. So um, no, no surprise there. But let's just uh, also take a look at, um, you know, what else we can um, explore here. So there's the sign. Here's the Pepsi machine. You know, they they even before I get to that, they even have like um, <laughs> this interesting like replica of the restaurant. It's like on a stand outside or something. Um, it's kind of kind of neat. Just a small replica of of the restaurant. There's the outside. Like that's nothing. No, no frills, no nothing, um, but just some, maybe some uh, I, notable, uh, you know, uh, sites or whatever, small things, little gems to uh, to take in. Like that's, that's really, um, that's really it. Boots Burgers are best. You know, that's their sign. You know, it's, uh, it's a small operation. Uh, you order up at this, um, where is it? At this spot here, I guess. No, where did it go? Uh, this is kind of like, like the window is to the left. It's kind of behind the, uh, where the Pepsi machine is here, but, um, and there's no place to eat there. So you got to eat offsite, which offsite just basically means you could take it on the street, I think, like, and just eat it there, but you're not eating on site. Let's put it that way on the property. But let me show you the burger. The burger's there. It's a good burger, good burger, uh, road stand style burger thick beef. Uh, the cheese is like, it's not like melted melt. It's like, uh, I don't know if they put it on cold, but it's definitely like getting warmed up, you know, as it starts to melt. Um, you see some onion, tomato, pickle. Um, and I also got the, uh, the hot relish on the side. So, um, that way I could have it and then try it with the burger and try it separately so I can enjoy the burger as well on its own. But it is a good burger. Um, I remember how, you know, a few burgers that we had. Uh, I remember one notably when we were out in Austin. Um, and one of the burgers there, I'm trying to remember the name of the place. But yeah, it was it was big. Like it was generous, you know, size wise. But it just was it just didn't really have that a great beef flavor, like as rich a beef flavor. Anyway, here it, it's a, it's a solid burger. Enough beef flavor. Really enjoyed that. Um it's, you know, I know people complain about like thick burgers, like tall burgers and whatever. I mean, this is not tall per se, but you know, it's, it's not a smash burger either. You know, it's a pressed patty, if anything. Um, but it's still a good bite. And there's some of the hot relish there just put on there. Yeah. It's got some heat. I don't know what hot relish is. What is hot relish? Have I even, have I even looked at that before? I have no idea. Let's just do a, um, a quick search. And see if that is, is that just chopped up uh, pepper or something, um, just given with an, a different name. Hot pepper relish recipe. I have no idea. Does this look like it? No, it doesn't. I don't. I don't understand what this is. Uh, that's not what it looks like. But maybe. I mean, not as many uh, peppers or whatever. But um, let's see what. Uh, jump to the recipe. What kind of recipe? Three cups of chopped. Uh, chop hot chili peppers. Uh, mix we have marugas, scorpions. I don't Italian peppers, ghost peppers. Yeah, it could be a whole number of things. Uh, I don't know which one that was, but it definitely had a little bit of a kick, a little brightness, like very acidic, uh, with a bite. Um, anyway, great burger, and I'm glad I uh, came across that random video. So I'll share that too, but um, thank you. Mr. George Motes for uh, guiding us in our never ending quest for, um, for preserving hamburger history. Okay. Uh, by the way, he's got that, uh, restaurant opening up in, in New York, uh, which was still not online when I had visited there. They're still building it out. 
but that's uh that's fine so um little real time follow up um even though i put these in my put notes in my outline i sometimes just don't read them i gloss over them at hurtado the bar next door is called haters h a y t e r s haters that's the bar i don't know what they offer i'm sure it's pretty good uh but yeah good vo- um good vibes Again, Boots Burgers, like I said, um, it's just off the beaten path. So um, juicy, beefy, you can't, it's like uh, what you would at, what you would get, you know, what you would want from a good roadside burger. Um, so on that same day, is there is some, I can't remember the order, uh, but on that same day, I also visited um, what is basically... Uh, another institution of the state of Texas. And I feel like whenever you are there, you would do a disservice if you were not to visit the land, well, rather the the gas station and convenience store that is Bucky's. And Bucky's is really, um, like I said, an institution. I'll just uh, kind of have something here, play in a little bit. Um, but it's like Walmart meet 7-Eleven or whatever, some convenience store. It's like how Walmart would do it. And primarily, it's like a huge gas station. You got so many pumps. You have no, you'd have no complaints. You'd have no, uh, you know, problems of getting gas or whatever. But inside is really, I think, where the magic is in that um, it is just this huge, like, convenience store slash um, food spot slash home goods kind of situation, you know, um, as you know, for those who are watching, it's like, you know, you can see here and those listening who can, it's like, it's, you see all these different areas, you know, you're greeted by, you know, a large stock of merchandise. You can see here on the left, these, uh, large count. Let me just take a pause here. This is a large round, you know, um, counter. One half of the counter that we're seeing right now makes the sandwiches, you know, the uh, and the of things like brisket, pork, sausage, turkey. You know, they're making that all there. And there's a counter, okay, this large kind of cutting board with this gentleman like cutting up all the meat, the brisket, whatever, slicing it, chopping it. It's like just a whole just kind of island of you know of a uh, cutting board just for that and then you have the whole line of like all the different uh place uh different spots of the different sandwiches and stuff and then on breakfast they also have breakfast items that have like egg muffin stuff um with like biscuit sandwiches or whatever um it's really something special on the other side of that counter you'll see um you would have like the sweets the uh confections like um you know, a uh, fudge, they have like fudge arrangement. Uh, they have nuts, like flavored candied nuts and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So you see that guy right there? Yeah. He's like chopping it up. Um, the counter that we're kind of seeing now, they have all sorts of baked goods. Again, some of, um, you also have some of the jerky as well that you can sample. I think that's one thing that I kind of missed out on that people were kind of mentioning later. Like you should get samples of like all these things if you can, because they are happy to share um, and to, uh, yeah, they're happy to share and to have you sample things. So here's the jerky. You see some, um, and they have a whole wall of like the prepackaged or jerky as well. All these flavors that you see there, you can get them right there. Prepackaged, boom. Um, you have count, you have uh, uh, things, uh, I don't know, uh, arrange assortments of different fruits, different uh, puddings, things like that. You can also see here, it's like, this is the home goods thing I was talking about. You know, Bucky's is like, you know, they got the mascot. It's, uh, they got their fearless Bucky's leader right there. It's, uh, and the little Bucky min- uh, minions as well. <laughs> they're just, uh, they're all waiting uh, for, uh, for the great, um, yeah, the great thing. So, yeah, uh, what else? Uh, clothes, merchandise, uh, outdoorsy things. It's like, uh, yeah, so many different types of things here. Um, 
Additionally, they have like super clean restrooms. Uh, restrooms are like uh, really, uh, really well maintained, really clean. Um, again, the convenience store side of things, you got your chips, got your snacks, more jerky. Um, it's just a whole assortment of things. So it's a huge space. So a lot of the Bucky's really kind of resemble this layout, this kind of size. Um, yeah, it's like a small department store. Okay. Uh, here are the confections. Oh, those are the, the, the nuts. People really go crazy over these, uh, between that and the, uh, the fudge. Hmm. Uh, really something else, really nice. Um, so at Bucky's, I, what did I have? I enjoyed a brisket sandwich, uh, and some banana pudding, you know? Um, so, and I took home some, a whole lot of jerky and, oh, there was one other thing, maybe not, they have the, the beaver nuggets, which I think is like this caramelized, uh, puffed, kind of snack, crunchy snack. So yeah, it has, it has a really super sweet caramel flavor. Uh, and then they have some other variations. Um, I forget offhand, but like they have them in smaller bags. The, the beaver nuggets can come in like these larger, uh, bags. Um, but they have other flavors as well. Uh, some small, slight variations. Um, so yeah, took home some of that to enjoy as well. So beef jerky, beaver nuggets, but yeah, the, um, the brisket sandwich is solid. I mean, like having, having had a lot of brisket and the brisket that I had during the trip, um, I was glad to have the brisket sandwich that I had. I mean, like considering that it is a convenience store, you know, gas station style food, you know, you go to those places, you, you could certainly have far worse food, um, and experiences, but you know, this is, uh, you know, top quality I'd say for, for that realm, uh, and that kind of uh, category, I suppose of, um, of food. So, and then you pair that with the experience, you know, the size, the, the depth of, you know, of what they sell and offer. It's like, it's kind of crazy. Um, again, everything is in fact bigger in Texas. It's, um, really something, uh, sight to behold. And it's great. It's a great excuse, you know, to fill up on, you know, on either gas or snacks and stuff. So usually, you know, the majority of uh, locations are in Texas. There's some in other states, I think offhand, like Alabama, Florida, Georgia, but definitely not as much as Texas. And again, it's going to be like, you know, in the outskirts, like on your way to some other city or some other location uh, in Texas. So um, you're not going to see them in city proper. Right. So um, you're going to see them. Uh, farther out but if you do have a chance you know to go there it's uh it is really a wonderful place <laughs> um so that's bucky's right uh so one other thing that comes to mind as far as uh places uh visited it kind of i don't know if this was the best way to round off the trip but just the way that it worked out in the schedule and maybe because it was relatively low priority. Um, and that is to uh, really revisit the, the, uh, the uh, Whataburger. I'm sorry, to, to revisit Whataburger. And I say revisit because we had the chance um, several years ago when we had uh, John's bachelor party. That was in Austin. And so I think that was my first time having Whataburger. Um, and the, but I don't think I've had it since. I think even in the other visits to Texas that I've had, I, 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 I never really made it time to, to go to Whataburger. And, um, so I made the trip now. I mean, I made the excuse to go now. Yeah. It was the last place just before I had to head back to the, to the airport. Um, so for whatever reason, I, I had to try it again. And, you know, I gotta say it is whatever. <laughs> it's like, whatever. I don't, I don't get it. Okay. Uh, and unfortunately that just comes from, uh, you know, the, uh, the California West coast snowflake that, uh, that I am. And, um, with the, uh, with the comforts of, of in and out, you know, that is the most uh, direct comparison, the East coast and, uh, and so forth. I'm sorry, West coast and whatnot. Um, yeah, it's like, there's nothing wrong with the burger. It's like a big 
version of like a Burger King burger. I know, like flavor wise, it's like a Burger King burger, just larger. And actually the order, so I ordered two things. I ordered the Whataburger, the standard Whataburger. And then I also ordered the sweet, a spicy and sweet burger. And I'll get to that in a bit. Um, so the Whataburger, you know, it's your burger. It's like meat, cheese, lettuce, tomato. It's like standard, like fast food burger. Um, it's neatly prepared, you know, it's like, but it's, uh, it's fine. <laughs> like, obviously, like I would go, I would, uh, enjoy far enjoy like boots burgers. Um, you know, some other small place like that, um, for fast food, it's like, you know, fast food, it's, it's prolific. You know, that's the thing about, uh, Whataburger it's uh, all over, um, here in Texas and, uh, throughout, uh, surrounding areas, but it's, um, it is interesting to compare it to in and out. I mean, like to say that it is in fact better than in and out and, and also not to say that in and out is a, um, an amazing burger. Um, but obviously the value propositions between the two can be a little, I would consider them a little different, you know? Um, let me get to that. Let me get back to that. The other burger I ordered is the sweet, the spicy and sweet burger. And actually they got that order wrong. Unfortunately, they gave me the chicken sandwich version of it. And I was tempted to try that, but I'm like, no, nah, I, I need the burger because I need to try it uh, compared to the Whataburger. So they were nice enough to, you know, swap it out. Um, and actually, the spicy and sweet burger is probably a better burger um, to have, at least for me. You know, there's uh, it's meat, cheese, um, some spicy, sweet sauce on there. I think that's what really sets it apart. So no veg, <laughs> no vegetable on there. Um so that was probably what made it a, a little better. Uh, and the flavor of the sauce, you know, with the burger. Yeah, make, for me, it makes it better. I really enjoy that a little more. Size-wise, it's about the same as a Wetter Burger. Um, but yeah, uh, again, I have no... I Having Wetter Burger now, it's like I have no problem with it. It's solid fast food. Again, I really don't see the hate towards In-N-Out. I think they're both just kind of uniquely positioned. I mean, In-N-Out certainly is in its own kind of um, you know, status to, you know, as far as what they're offering again, uh, Whataburger is like every street corner or something, you know, in Texas and, uh, you know, wherever it's offered in and out is, you know, they supposedly like, you know, taking their time to intentionally, you know, limit their, their offering so that they can have their, uh, distribution and, you know, their product just um, delivered just in time to all their locations so that they can prepare the freshest meal possible, you know, and at a price point that I think no one would really complain about, especially for like, uh, you know, the double double or whatever. It's like it is a relatively cheaper uh, offering, um, but for its value, it's like you get, you know, a great product out of it. Um but again, with Whataburger, it's like big, everything big, excellent, like drink, you know, super sweet tea, whatever. It's like, um, yeah, I mean, and beyond burgers. I mean, you have other types of uh, food offerings, the other proteins and whatnot. So again, it's like this uniquely, they each have their unique position, you know, where it is. So um, it's fine. <laughs> of course, I would go again. Um, I'd have no problem, but there's just so much to explore um, and enjoy, uh, elsewhere, you know? Um, so I'd rather do that, um, first and then what a burger can come later. Uh, so with that said, um, that kind of rounds out the, uh, the adventure in, in Dallas. Now going back to the, uh, the barbecue, um, we had a lot of heavy hitters, a lot of great spots, uh, well-known places, places with notoriety, um, I will say that, uh, I think certainly confidently like Goldie certainly was like the best overall, um, as far as, you know, the quality of, of the meat, the presentation, the, um, yeah, just the overall like effort I think put into, it's like, you could tell that it, it is a really good, um, really good product that they're putting out. And again, it, like we kind of, um, um, referenced or mentioned from the pre you know we we're talking about it it's like the barbecue avengers you know assembling you know all the best of the best uh coming together and making a really uh great great meal um 
and certainly that 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 came through and definitely worth you know worth a visit um and then but i will say that hurtado is definitely i think my favorite uh from the three i think because they have the the they're conscious that you know that you have they have these different offerings of different types of plates right based on what you want out of it how much you know sized correctly for your group so you don't have to guess or anything it's like here's a plate with like these different things and of a quantity that will feed you know um your family or a you know a small village so i think um or one dumb and hungry but uh it's a good yeah it's just a nice uh, way to offer you know barbecue <laughs> and food in general so i i i do appreciate that and again there's like that story aspect you know the um building up from um from where they were and where they are now i mean like it, there's a great story uh, behind that as well now as far as um you know the next time you know there are we kind of mentioned before that there are a handful of places that i wish i could have been uh, could have visited there's like danes uh, there's bricks um there's this egyptian style uh texas barbecue i don't remember if they're in dallas but uh definitely in texas um and again like you know need to revisit some of the cities again like visit austin revisit houston I haven't visited houston in a while you know i want to go to uh some places there one when that comes to mind is um uh blood Bro- is it blood blood brothers yeah i got that um kind of vietnamese I think like Cajun influence in there. If I remember that correctly. Anyway, there's so many places um, that I wish I could visit and revisit. So eventually, but again, there's still other many types of food groups and things throughout that are also worth looking at. Um, And again, I know you gravitate around, uh, you know, barbecue and burgers. Um, and that's a lot of what I, I guess I really enjoy, but, um, there are others, other places out there that I definitely would look forward to, um, to enjoying. So I, I don't know, but certainly as we've, uh, kind of established that barbecue is a, I don't know, foundational food group, I guess, you know, it is definitely the building blocks of, um, of everything else that follows, <laughs> it's a really strong, you know, strong food group. But um, I don't know. I- I'm rambling now, as I usually do. But we've come to the end of another episode. So thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, excited to bring you more of our adventures with good food and good people. Uh, reach out. You know, I'm at Dub and Hungry. Uh, when he's here, my chow's at my underscore chow. You can email us. Did you know that? You can email us at hi at dumbandhungry.com. You can leave your feedback and your love letters. You can find the videos here on YouTube. Won't you like, subscribe, and smash? You can also find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever else fine podcasts are served. But until next time, I'm Angelo, the Dumb and Hungry, and on your next food adventure, remember to try one of each. Thank you.